I recently was in Indianapolis, outside of this nondescript building, to meet Jim Ragsdale, the executive director of the Society of Broadcast Engineers. The Society of Broadcast Engineers is an organization that is dedicated to the advancement of broadcast engineers of all levels and of all types, whether you're television or radio, or whether you're a beginner or you're a seasoned veteran who's been doing this for 150 years, of all types and of all levels. So as more responsibilities are put on broadcast engineers these days, we have less and less time to learn new skills and to keep up to date with technology. And that's where the SBE comes in handy so much. So I sat down with Jim Ragsdale to talk about where the SBE is today and where it's going to be tomorrow. I'm really focused on education a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and we have, surprise, I'll tell you, from day one here, the state broadcast associations started to reach out to me and saying, how can we help with education of broadcast engineers? Because we know that the industry is desperate for more broadcast engineers. And we know that there are broadcast engineers who are holding on, continuing to work and serve their stations because they don't want to leave them high and dry. Mm -hmm. And there's no one to replace them. So uh, the Indiana Broadcast Association, uh, Dave Arlen, their director, was the first one who called me and said, welcome to the industry and let's talk about how we can be supportive. There's a local Indiana organization called the Indiana Association of School Broadcasters. And it's both high school and college oh. organizations. And Indiana probably has more high school broadcasters than anywhere in the U.S. It's, it's crazy. How cool. Yeah, they have like 70 high school programs. Oh, wow. And 20 college programs. Wow. Yeah, it's it's really phenomenal. So every year they do an award ceremony for the high school and then an award ceremony for the colleges. And the high school program is in March and then the college program is two weeks later. And I went to that last year and I mean, sitting in an auditorium of 700 high school students who are all involved in broadcasting, it's pretty incredible. And they're so fired up about the art of, of broadcasting and how they can you know effectively do what they do not all of them are on the tech side you know but uh, a lot of them are front of the mic but they generally are learning both sides they're learning behind the mic and in front of the mic and they're engineering uh, what they what they've captured and, and producing it for consumption that's really cool I mean I've never really thought there were so many high school right and there's 70 in this state yeah that's Yeah, it is amazing. Here in Indianapolis, I think we have five. Wow. Yeah. It's generally um, either a communications department or or vocational technology. Oh, okay. Um, The tech side is is leaning more towards the Bowtech Mm -hmm. uh, audience, and then the communications is more of the writing the script and and front of camera stuff. Cool. Yeah. So, So they do... They do this, uh, these two award ceremonies. Uh, Butler University is hosting it uh, here in Indy, and I'm going to go and I'm going to speak to two groups um, about careers in broadcasting and specifically in, in uh, broadcast engineering and technology. Um, what an opportunity! And and they are enthusiastic about SBE. My conviction, and I've shared this over and over again with chapter chairs and chapters that we need to be reaching out to high school students and perhaps even to middle school students, especially if they have STEM programs in place. Right. Um, and I know like here in Indianapolis, they, the, the uh, amateur radio uh, club was hosting a STEM uh, program at, with a local middle school. Yeah. So I, I just feel like that's the opportunity we have to jump on to, to show high school and and middle school students that broadcasting is relevant. Broadcasting is all around them. They just don't realize it. They're oblivious to it. They have a smartphone and that's all they know. Right. But we can help them understand there's a whole lot of technology behind what they're consuming from their smartphone. Um, And, and this is how it happens. You know, it's like, I think you said in your email, the making the sausage, you know, there's a lot behind (laughs) what they see. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's fun. 
and they can get their hands in it already. They don't have to wait. Um, and that's the other thing. I, I have a lot of, of contact with high school students. And I know a lot of them who don't want to just go spend another four years in a classroom learning something. They want to graduate from high school and start doing it right now. No, they're, they're not averse to learning and, and they need to learn a lot more. Right. But there is an opportunity to begin practicing the art while you're learning it. Um, so I think that's the, the message we've got to get out to high school students is you don't have to wait until you're 22 to start putting this to, to use. Yeah. You can do it right now, but we've got to get the industry also excited about that. And that's where I think the state broadcast associations come in, is that they they have the contact with the stations, their member stations and, and networks, and can help them understand that they need to start investing in a, as one person described it, a farm farm system yes. of development. Um, and realizing that they, they may have to pay a pay an hourly rate to somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing yet, <laughs> but give them the opportunity to learn from people like you and people who've been in the industry. So it, it, that's that's my passion. That's what I've been trying to spread everywhere I go. Yeah, I mean, the educational aspect is... Yeah. Because there aren't really schools right. teaching this stuff yeah. anymore. Less and less, especially on the on the actual transmission side. Right. There are very few that are teaching it. Um, and... You know, so, I mean, the only way to really learn it now is mm -hmm. through, I don't want to say informal means, but mm -hmm. basically mentorships. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, finding somebody who understands it, mm -hmm. understands it well enough to teach it. Yeah. And can't teach it. <laughs> right. Not everybody can teach it, but. Yeah. We had a, a guest on our Web Extra this month who was talking about workplace learning. She's a, a coordinator of workplace learning in a school system. And so that's what she's all about, is helping students find locations where they can go and begin working while they're still in school and learn what they need to know in order to work. Uh, I know here in Indiana, uh, the, the Indiana Broadcasters gave an internship. They had, I think, five internships this year uh, for high school. And they had one who already had a job offer um, before they even finished it. So I, I think... I think state broadcast associations are beginning to see it for the most part. I think they are beginning to see it and they want to invest in it. They want to figure out how they can help with the education and creation of, of the next class of broadcast engineers. But getting there, it, it's a very piecemeal. Every state's trying to solve the problem their own way. Right. Uh, and so do you see the SBE coming in as, as trying to create this, um, framework or the structure yeah yeah and, and i think we need to pick up we you know we have chapters who have been very uh, involved in the formation of workplace learning programs i know wisconsin for example we had um, steve brown one of our former board members was on a task force in wisconsin that helped the work uh, state workforce development develop an internship program so he helped write the the expectations for learning goals um, and I think we can take programs like that. And then I, I try to spread that by talking to Virginia and saying, hey, have you seen what Wisconsin's doing? Yeah. And here in Indiana, have you seen what Wisconsin's doing? Uh, you know, you don't have to create this from scratch. It's already there. Just right. call up this person and they'll share with you how they designed the program. So I, I, I feel like that we can be that center of the wheel and help spread that information out to these other organizations. We've got that unique respect. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was, and I think that's, broadcast engineers definitely, I think, feel like they don't get any respect. And in, in, in many situations, I don't think they do. There's a few situations where I think the employer really gets it mm -hmm. and, and gives them a lot of respect and freedom and responsibility, but I think we do we do have a respect problem. Hi, I'm gonna take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience, you can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry-leading platforms. 
Linkup has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. They bring old school network experience to your products. Well, I guess I could say we since I do work there. So we are having a contest. It's the Linkup Show Us Your XDS Receivers contest. You can enter for a chance to win each week, a chance to win bigger each month, and a chance to win huge at the end of the contest by scoring a grand prize worth $500. So, how do you enter? It's simple. Take a photo of the rack of XDS receivers at your radio station and send it to Mark at linkupcommunications.com with your name, your title, your station call letters, and where you are located and how many XDS receivers we'd find at your station. The contest begins Wednesday, February 21st, 2024 at 1 p.m. Eastern and runs through May 1st, 1 p.m. Eastern. Winners will be announced on Facebook and directly notified using the contact info you provided. Full rules and details are available at linkupcommunications.com slash contest. And now, back to the video. I think partly is we don't do a good job of marketing uh, ourselves as an organization and individually. And so like, for example, one of the sessions that we're going to have at the NAB show um, at the end of the two day NS workshop that we have scheduled uh, is how to talk to your management team, Mm. how to talk ROI, how to talk capital investment, how to talk uh, efficiency savings um, to folks who care about those things. You, you're very focused on the equipment and making it work. We've, we've got to do a better job of explaining why what we do has value to the owner, to the management team. It, uh, it, and we haven't, you know, we just haven't done a good job of that. I, I've met a few broadcast engineers who really understand that and, and they're adamant about um, making sure that their management team understands when they're there in the middle of the night or on the weekend, keeping the station in operation, despite something that's happened right. uh, that was out of their control. Um, so, I, yeah, I think it's a problem both on an individual and an industry mm-hmm. basis to explain why broadcast engineering is integral to success. Do you ever see uh, SBE reaching out to um, management, station ownership, mm-hmm. that type of thing to bring them into the conversation and the, the picture or... I, I, I the think, focus. No, I think we do need to do that. And if we can get the venue to do that, uh, it, an example would be there's a, a National Association of State Broadcast Associations, mm-hmm. NASBA. Um, and NASBA is having a gathering at the NAB show. And so Dave Arlen here in Indiana said, I'm going to get you on that agenda. It's on a Sunday morning. I want you to come and, and talk to the State Broadcast Association leaders about why SBE is integral to what they want to do. Um, so I think we've got to continue to look for those venues where we can speak to NASBA and its members and help them speak to their members. We, are, we do, there is this distance and I, I wish we could break down some of the walls. Um, but the industry is so diverse. I mean, you've seen it. You, yeah. have, the, you have the mom and pop stations and you have the networks and so learning where the opportunities are to speak to those. Mm-hmm. Um, college athletics is another huge opportunity. There's all, so many people doing broadcasting in college yeah. athletics. And it's that there's a lot of money tied up in that. Yeah. And so getting access to those people is tougher because there's a lot of price tag to access. Right. Thousands of dollars that we don't. But at the same time, it's like, where are you pulling the people to right. do your broadcasts. Yeah, yeah. Right. If we can make the case that we're we're involved in training those people so that they can better do what college athletics needs, mm-hmm. then I think we can get access to them. But it's that's a little harder. I think it's a little harder wall to, to break down than say it's religious or or church oriented. I. I honestly, I didn't even think about that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that is another place where there is a lot of yeah need for that education. Yeah, a lot of technology. I know you know uh, admi- uh, public administration is also you know they have to 
stream their local town council or, you know, so who's involved in that? Probably, I guess, probably a consulting engineer that maybe helped them set that up. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I'm sure that every person who's tasked with that responsibility is not one of our members. If, you know, if you look at the U.S. Department of Labor statistics, there are something like over 10,000 people who are involved in broadcast technology in one way or another. Well, that's, you know, we're a, we're a small slice of that. Yeah. So how do we find those other people mm -hmm. and help them see what we have to offer? And if it's beneficial to them, they may, they may join. Uh, they may not, but they may join. Yeah, so I think we've got to connect with people like that. So SPE has been doing this for 60 <clears throat> years now. Right. I mean, I've looked at the wall with all the mm -hmm. past presidents, right? But, okay, we've seen where we've been. Mm -hmm. Where is it going? <laughs> I mean, I, we were just kind of talking about yeah. look, you know, reaching out to college. Right. But, I mean, as far as education, technology, like where, where do you see SPE going in the next, I don't know, five, ten years? Yeah, I, I think my conviction is that we we may need to provide a, a training place, mm -hmm. a venue. And, and one of the dreams that I have is that perhaps we could um, help create a, a learning environment for broadcasting, both radio and television, um, that employers could, you know, hire a new employee and send them for two weeks of training. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you've been to the Alabama Broadcasters Association, no. Broadcasters Claims, phenomenal program. I've got to get down there and see it. Larry Welcomes uh, is a tremendous teacher and I had a great conversation with Larry. So I think we need to take what, <laughs> the, what I see happening is that we multiply that kind of program that Larry and Alabama Broadcasters Association has, has put together there we multiply it in Indianapolis would be an easy place to do that, but it could happen anywhere. You know, it, it just, we need the, the place and we may need to find donors who are willing to donate, you know, uh, donate a building, donate equipment. Right. So that we can create that learning space. That would be huge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know like Gates mm -hmm. has their right. their training their week or a couple day or whatever it is their, right. their training thing, transmitter training. Yeah, uh, I think Nautel has something mm -hmm. similar to that. Yeah, but those are very specific to their brand of right. transmitter. Right, not the rest of the yeah, and, and that's what I think we need is something that's technology agnostic mm -hmm. or or manufacturer agnostic. Yes, environments that people could learn the basics. So that an employer will know in two weeks, I can have somebody who's much more equipped mm -hmm. to help in in the station. That would be very, I mean, that would be really neat to have. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of like the creation of another broadcast engineering school. Yeah, yeah, but but shorter term. <laughs> right. That's where looking at let's say that that internship program that they developed in Wisconsin, and looking at what are the specific deliverables that we need to to hit, designing a good program that can achieve those deliverables. Not everyone is gonna succeed. Not every student that comes to it, or not every employee that comes to it is gonna walk out with the same level of proficiency, but we've, they've gotta, we've gotta teach them the skill set, and then they've gotta demonstrate the proficiency in it at the end of that program so that their employer knows what they're ready for. So do you envision them coming out with say like a CBT certification? Yeah, it, 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 frankly, that would be it, it, a, um, something that uh, we can validate provides the necessary uh, training so that they can sit for a CBT exam or, or one of the other uh, certification exams that we have at the end of that period. Uh, I mean, that could get really intense. Yeah. You know, we're cramming a lot of knowledge into somebody. I mean, that's why our, I said the CBT. It's yeah. a little bit easier to. Right. To and and it's, in, a, but... it's a already a recognized certification. Right. Um, yeah. I think that, that or something, that's where I need the experts, the people who do this, to tell me what, what certifications would be most important, especially if it's radio or if it's TV or, you know, what. Right. I mean, CBT can be. 
pretty generic in that. So uh, I, I think that's a big opportunity for us. Um, SBE has the, the unique situation that we're a 501c6, which is a trade association uh, under IRS guidelines. We also have a 501c3, the NS Educational Foundation, uh, and that's part of the, the SBE. So we could we could receive donations and create that learning environment within the NS Educational Foundation, um, and then employers could pay them for the training. Right. And so I think we have the, the nuts and bolts that we can put this together. Um, that but, is to get the curriculum in. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, there's the formal design of the program and then who's gonna teach this? You know, we need instructors. Um, I have somebody already in mind, but I don't know if he's, he's a recently <laughs> retired broadcast <laughs> guy and, and I think he could be a, a real effective Leader in that, but yeah. you know. and, and you're pulling from nationwide too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just know my little world mm -hmm. and how much I've learned from the people in LA. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, gosh, I, I've learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. But now you expand this to nationwide, and yeah, there's people in New York and Alabama, and right. Wisconsin, you know, mm -hmm. who have been doing amazing things and mm -hmm. able to teach. Yeah, that's the huge part. Yeah, able to teach. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be somebody who has the skill set necessary to be a good teacher. Yeah, I've run into folks around the U.S. who are doing this, um, so I think that I think those people are there. We we've, we've got to create the environment, get the word out that this is what we're looking for. Take applications, figure out how how this could happen. Um, Do you see like a trial run happening in the semi near future? I say semi, it's yeah. like the five to ten, not the ten to twenty. Okay, okay, yeah, I would say in the five to ten. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll right. have to, we have a, you know, a, a starter in the NS Educational Foundation, but we need more funds in order to make that happen. But being a five one c three, we do have the opportunity then for an organization if they want to make a, you know, tax exempt uh, gift to the NS Educational, they can take some equipment out of service and send it over to us and you know we can give them a receipt for that and there are a lot of i mean i'm seeing it all the time there's studios being built yes rebuilt right and <clears throat> doing with all the other old stuff yeah right there is a constant among some broadcasts yes. <laughs> there's a constant yes. <laughs> uh, rotation of old equipment being replaced with new equipment there are still those ones that are holding on to those those right. old rotary pot uh, <laughs> consoles yeah. and yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah no that that's exciting and then still continuing on the uh, the uh, webinars yes and the the workshops yeah yeah thank you for watching part one of two of this interview it was so long I had to break it up into two parts but uh, next week I will have the second part. Uh, available. And if you're watching this after it's already released, well, it'll be here up on the screen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.